All right, holy cow, is it good to be back home. For those of you who don't know, I went to high school in Onstead, Michigan. So my old stomping grounds, man, and holy cow, it does feel good to be back here in the country where I belong, that's for sure. So good afternoon, my fellow Michiganders. Good afternoon, my fellow American. It is very good for all of you to be here today. Now, if you would have came back to me five years ago and said, Garrett, you know what you're going to do in five years? You're going to be running for governor. You're going to inspire Michigan's greatest asset, we the people. You'd be running around the state with your butt on fire, inspiring and activating everyone. I would have laughed you right out of the room because there's no way that I ever wanted to be involved in this evil game called politics. Never. I was your typical American, would go vote straight ticket, wouldn't even know who I was voting for, and I'd go back to my life. And then that all changed, obviously, on April 9th, 2020, when Governor Whitmer extended that stay-at-home order. And I remember being in my office on a Thursday afternoon, very upset, waiting for one of our elected officials to stand up, waiting for someone to call it out, and nobody did. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start a Facebook group, and I'm going to call it Michiganders Against Excessive Quarantine. And I went on there, and I did a five-minute little hissy fit video about constitutional rights. I went home that night, my wife said, what the heck did you do? I said, well, I started a Facebook group. And she goes, why? I said, because I had to get something off my chest. And lo and behold, 500 people joined that group that night. And I looked around at my wife, I said, oh, there's 500 people that feel just like I do. Because we all thought we were alone, didn't we? And that next night, 100,000. The following night, 200,000. The third night, 300,000. I looked at my wife, I said, what the hell did I do? There are a lot of people. And people were frustrated and they were motivated. So what we do with this movement, we activate them. We activated we the people to hammer down and we went around and start holding freedom festivals. And we got behind that Unlock Michigan petition that took away that 1945 law. Who here signed that petition and circulated? How good did that feel? Felt amazing, didn't it? That you're a part of bigger or something bigger than self. You know what they call that? They call that passion. And then as the movement continued to build, we stood up against the mandates. We stood up against putting our kids at home. We, we stood up against the indoctrination that we're still standing up for today in our public schools. The list goes on and on. And here we are right now, one month away from one of the most important elections in the history of this country. Because we know if we don't win this thing here in November, we're not going to have this little idea called America anymore. Because look at the hot garbage they've been trying to do over the past several years. Everything I did not have on my bingo card that they would allow 10 million illegal immigrants into our country, an invasion. I did not have on my bingo card an assassination attempt, not once but twice, to our president, President Trump. I did not have on my bingo card the interest rates, the economy, the list goes on and on. We are all hurting and we all feel it and we're all frustrated. But I'm going to leave you here today with this. The power of one can lead to the power of many. Don't you ever, ever tell me that you can't make a difference because you can. Do you understand that President Trump won this state back in 2016 by only 10,704 votes? That was it. So what does that mean? What if it's that close this time? That means if 20 people, only 20 people out of our 83 counties goes and talks and sways seven people, we win this state. That's how close it may be again. So don't think that you talking to people, getting out of your own echo chamber, as we say, right? Just don't talk to fellow Republicans. Go talk to folks in the middle. You don't have to tell them who to vote for. All you have to do is ask questions. You know, is your life better off now than it was five years ago? They'll say absolutely not. Do you agree with the 10 million people that came over here illegally? everything. Our country is literally on fire right now. It's not going to be hard. And they may say, well, I don't like his personality. Well, I don't care. We're not inviting him to Christmas dinner, right? President Trump is from New York. And for those of us who are a little older, what's our stereotype of New Yorkers? They're in your face, right? They have big egos. They're going to tell you how it is, right? I'm not going to vote because of somewhere or where someone's from. I'm going to vote because someone's policy their leadership, and everything that he was able to do for his four years. All we have to do is reflect back and look. We have 30 days left. And just like Congressman Wahlberg said, hey, I'm a football guy. 
This is the fourth quarter, and we always play like we're five points down. And so you have to hammer down. you got to leave it all out in the field because one day you will look back and you will know and you will understand that you were a part of something big, that you were a part of the change that was necessary, that you saved this little idea called America, and you were part of the solution because you never know what small act that you may say or do that may literally change the lives of millions. Not millions anymore, is it? Because this is worldwide, but billions tomorrow. It's always darkest right before sunrise, and it's getting brighter out, folks. It's all on you. Let's get it done. God bless you. God bless the state of Michigan, of course, and always God bless these United States.